Hello and welcome to PhotoX. In this video I'm going to go through how to create an HDR image using Lightroom and Photomatics. And now an HDR image is high dynamic range. What this means is it's a number of images uh, merged together to create overall an image with dark and light parts exposed correctly. Normally when we take a photograph camera sensor can only pick up a certain dynamic range between dark and light which is a lot less than <coughs> excuse me than what our eyes see so using the HDR method we can create a photograph that looks more natural uh, with the dark parts and the light parts exposed HDR has also become uh, quite a marmite thing some people love it some people hate it and it can be overused and you can create some really weird dreamy and somewhat um, interesting effects with it. Uh, in this video I'm just going to go through and try and get a, a natural looking image. Okay I'm going to use some images I took a few weeks ago of a sunset and what I did is I used the auto bracketing feature on my camera and I took three photographs which you can see here, here and here. As you can see, they're all slightly different exposures. This one is at 1 25th of a second, this one is at 1 50th of a second, and that one is at 1 100th of a second. Of course that means I've got slightly different exposures on each one, exposed for the dark and the highlights. So first of all, to create an HDR image, what we need to do is select all these three images so hold down the control key and select all three images so they go grey now you need to make sure with HDR that uh, all the images are exactly aligned so they need to be taken on a tripod or if you've got a very steady hand you should be able to get away with it but all the images need to be exactly aligned if there's any moving objects such as trees or people or cars you're going to get some really weird effects when you eventually go and do the HDR. The only moving parts in this image is the grass and the foreground. And as you'll see in a minute when I've done the, uh, the HDR, there's actually a person uh, walking down the path that you can't see in these images at the moment. Okay, so that's the first step. What we need to do now is make sure you have Photomatics installed. And if you're using Lightroom, um, you should also have the Photomatics plugin installed. So we'll come up here to File, Export with Preset, and you'll see here Photomatics Pro. So we'll click on that, and the Photomatics export pane will come up. Now I have a number of uh, settings here. Align images, you want this checked. Even if you're on a tripod, check this because it will help align any small. Uh, misalignments occurred. Crop aligned result. Keep that checked. And now I have two settings to correct the alignment um, by horizontal and vertical shifts or by matching features. The matching features uh, option has the uh, software looks at the overall image and finds defining features such as the edge of buildings etc and matches them up. In this image I don't have any buildings so I'm going to keep correcting horizontal and vertical shifts. Reducing ghosting artifacts. This helps reduce the ghosting caused by moving objects such as trees and plants. Um, the automatic works quite well. Um, the semi-manual works better but it takes a bit more practice using that. So for now I'm just going to stick with automatic and normal. I'm going to keep reduce noise on for normal and underexposed images. This just reduces the noise in the images as you would with your normal noise reduction. Uh, reduce chromatic aberrations, I want to keep checked. That will help uh, stop the purple and blue fringing. And I want to automatically re-import the image back into my Lightroom library once I've finished. And this is just the file name. I want the output format to be TIFF 16-bit. This is the highest, uh, this is the highest quality, which is going to help afterwards for editing further. So I'll go ahead and click export, 
and Lightroom will then start to export these images to Photomatics and in a second Photomatics will pop up. There it is. As you can see it's generating the image and in a minute the final image will pop up and it either look really good or really awful depending on which preset you last used. does take a little while and there we go it's just about to come up and there we go that's the HDR image that's combined all three of those images into one and you can see it's a lot lighter you can see a lot more detail and it looks a bit a little bit weird now down here we have a list of presets you can see we have enhancer default compressor default fusion default and then a load of others. You can just go ahead and click these, see what they do. You'll notice that the fusion and the compressor don't quite give the same amount of light as the other ones do. This is because um, the fusion actually just fuses the images on top of each other rather than blends them together as Enhancer does. Usually when I do an HDR image, I usually use the smooth preset. This is the most natural one. Uh, it's the one that I always go to and start editing from there. As you can see with grunge, you can get really bizarre and quite frankly awful results from it. Uh, Painterly, as its name suggests, it looks a little bit like a painting. Not too bad in some circumstances, but I always go for smooth. As you can see, it's nice, natural natural looking image. Okay if we look over here we have uh, a long list of different settings. You want to make sure that tone mapping is selected and details enhancer is selected. Here we have the strength. This changes the strength of the HDR merging. You can see as I bring this up get different effects. Color saturation obviously changes the saturation of the colors. You can have it from really saturated to black and white. Usually in the middle is about right. Back there is good for this image. Micro contrast. As you can see it changes the contrast of the image. Again, just play with the sliders. There's no hard and fast rules with this. Just keep playing until you get a pleasing looking image. Smoothing. I tend to put this in light mode. And then you can play with these different settings. You can see in um, light mode or minimum, you always get these halos occurring, which isn't very nice. As you can see, as I go up to low and mid, the halos reduce. You get a much more natural looking image. I think I'm going to leave this in high, it looks best. And here we have the tone settings, the white point. This um, controls the highlights of the image. Too dark there. Then the black point obviously contains controls the blacks of the image. I want some blacks in here to give it the nighttime look. Gamma controls the overall brightness of the image. Leave that about there. Temperature is your color temperature. You can put it to the left to get really uh, cold blue, or over to the right and get to the uh, warm reds. Okay, I'm going to probably leave that pretty much in the middle. Saturation highlights. Obviously, as it says, that's the saturation of the highlights. You can see the highlights down here. Keep an eye on that section there. 
as I bring the saturation highlight slider up, you'll see the saturation boost. As I put it right down the bottom, you can see it actually takes away all the colour to a grey. So I'm going to leave that on 0, or close enough to 0. Saturation of shadows does the same thing, but with the shadows, see as I pull that down to minus 10, it takes away all the colour from the shadow areas. If I stick it right up to 10, it boosts the saturation in the shadow areas. Leave that on naught. Micro smoothing, um, as it suggests, it smooths the images out. Depending on the image, this, can, this setting can uh, dramatically affect what the final image looks like. On full, there it looks quite nice, but I do quite often put this down a bit lower just to give a bit more depth to the image, a bit of texture. That looks quite nice there. And um, these settings here you don't usually need to adjust. It's so just the smoothness of the highlights. I might just bring this down a bit, just to bring this area of the sky down a little. Shadow smoothness. It's okay. I'll just put it there. And shadow clipping, we don't need in this image, there's no clip shadows. And this box here, 360 degree image, you only need to use this if you have a 360 degree image, uh, which is pretty unlikely you'll ever do, so we'll just leave that. Okay, I'm quite happy with that so far. Um, as you can see up here, there's a few dust spots. And as I said earlier, when doing HDR, quite often you'll, if you have a moving object, you'll get weird ghosting, which you can see we have here in this woman. She's kind of got two heads. So we'll need to sort that out in a minute. So what I'm going to do, once I'm happy with uh, what I've done in Photomatics, I come down here and I go to Save and Re-Import. I click that. Photomatics will create that HDR image, and it will re-import it back into Lightroom. And see it pops up there in between the three images and the file name will be whatever you uh, called it. I just left it on the default. So now we go into our develop module and we can continue to adjust the image, clone out all the dust spots. do any other edits that you want. If we just go back to the library pane here and select one of the three images, let's go for the lightest one. This is the lightest exposure from the three images. You can see how dark this foreground is, so even though the sky is nicely exposed, the foreground is very dark. If we then skip to our HDR image, you can see the foreground has come up. We still have this lovely sky exposed, but all the background and the foreground is now properly exposed. This was the uh, darkest image of the three, exposed for the sky and the sun. As you can see, the whole uh, the whole front of the picture is completely black. This one is the uh, overall mid exposure, the correct exposure, if you like. And that's the uh, exposed to the foreground, and this is the HDR. So as you can see, the HDR is very useful when you have scenes with strong highlights and shadow areas, especially landscapes when you can expose the sky and the foreground. You can get really nice looking, pleasing images. Obviously with this image I've still got some work to do, especially down here on this woman. But uh, for this video, that's just how to get an HDR image. I'll do another video later on on how to edit this image to get it to the final stage. Okay, that's all. If you have any questions on HDR or anything else,
please leave a comment or send me an email and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks very much.